Hey, what's up? It's Sifu Cuddle, and in this Kung Fu combination, we're going to be working with some crane techniques. So we're going to be focusing on the crane beak and the crane neck, which is just here at the end of the wrist, and we are going to be striking at soft areas. When it comes to cranes, uh, crane style techniques, we are using this to strike soft areas like the eyes, the temple, the throat, behind the ear. These are areas that you would be striking because this cannot handle the same amount of impact as, say, a full fist. Does that mean that you should just throw it away? No, it really depends on the context of the situation, but you should also be able to know when to throw this fist to, uh, to deal with the situation and when you can actually use the crane beak instead. So things that you can do to develop your crane beak is to work on fingertip conditioning, wrist flexibility and wrist conditioning as well. And these take a lot of time. It's not something you can just hit something as hard as you can and you're good you could end up damaging yourself, uh, injuring yourself doing something like that. So it requires small incremental training, very light at first, and then increasing a little bit day by day by day, and then you will develop a good healthy conditioning for these techniques. Otherwise, let's go over the movements. Okay, so let's make crane beaks. We're gonna have this position the entire time. Uh, also flex the wrist. We're gonna use the crane beak to hook as well when we block. So our first thing we're going to do is strike backward and downward with the crane neck. We're going to combine this into a jump and a block. So right here, I raise my hand and foot together, and then I'm gonna jump forward and scoop and block with my other hand. So I hook over my opponent's technique. Okay, so if I'm facing this way, raise up, scoop. Now I'm going to go over the top, poke to the eyes with the crane beak. Now I'm going to hit with the crane neck at the same time, extend my back hand and kick forward. And then I'm going to step down with some pendulum, uh, like throwing that counterbalance as I throw this crane beak forward again. So again, I start crane beak rolling up and over, block, strike, kick, and then drop back and strike, okay? It's a lot at once. You have a couple of times where you're kicking and you're striking simultaneously. We're just trying to make sure that the opponent has a really hard time of figuring out what to block. Okay, if I'm facing towards you, I roll up over the top. One, two, three. It's a nice, clean strike. I face this way, roll over the top. One, two, three. Okay, so there you have it. Now, this is a classic crane technique. We're using that roll, we're blocking, we're using the crane beak, we're striking with the crane neck. It's actually really um, a good look at crane style overall. But you have to remember that applying this is all about context. You're not gonna go into a sparring match or a, a ring fight wearing gloves and throw crane beaks. It's just not the smartest thing to do. You have to use the right tool for the job. So crane beaks are best used when you don't have the chance to wear gloves and you are in a situation where maybe a poke to the eye is going to end it, not make your opponent more aggressive. Okay, so you have to use this responsibly. <laughs> the other thing is you can't just throw these out because you can't, you know, you can't just throw these movements out just because I said we don't use it in the ring. If you want to apply the concepts to the ring, that's fine. You just do it with fists. So think of how your hand position would be in the glove to cover, to throw a punch, then to move in with a kick and a strike at the same time or just dropping back after a kick with that uh, pendulum style momentum to power a punch. Now, of course, these are things I would go over you in, with you in person. Um, if we had lessons, if you were a private lesson student of mine, or if you were training in my school, this is how we would go over it. We would learn the movements. We would go over applications and drills, pad striking, conditioning, and then learn how to apply it into more of a freestyle context into sparring eventually. So you would be able to get more of a well-rounded training, not just following movements on YouTube, but this is a start for you, and especially if you're interested in crane style. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Otherwise, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next Kung Fu Combo.